Hi, I'm Johnny from Cinema 5D, and I'm here with Bill Roberts from Adobe. Bill, good morning. How are you? Everything is great. Thanks for having me. Can you please give us an overview of what's new with Adobe Premiere CC? Sure. So one of the big themes we've added this cycle is all about collaboration. Our cloud collaboration engine, Team Projects, enters 1.0. A uh, lot of great new features in there. Probably the most meaningful to users is your personal undo stack is now part of your history. So anywhere you move around, you've actually got all of the creative decisions and steps you took to get to where you are uh, in the system. We added two other collaborative areas. One of them works very well with team projects. Um, that's the ability to have multiple open projects. So that was a big feature request from people who'd come to Premiere from FCP7. So that means you can have as many projects open as you want and move objects between projects. Uh, lastly, uh, particularly for feature film workflows, we've added another feature, which is locked projects. So you can take access to a project and lock and make it read only for everyone else while you're working and then release it and other people can pick it up. So it's kind of a serial collaborative. So that's a big move on collaboration. Another big area is VR. So earlier in the year, we did a technology acquisition, getting all of the Skybox technologies from a company, Metal. And we also hired the founder of that company, Chris Boboidis, to head up our immersive efforts. So now we actually have a full range of transitions and effects. And then we also added the Adobe Immersive Environment, which is the headset so you can not only see the content, but now we're overlaying the timeline inside of the headset and allowing the user to interact while being in an immersive mode. Along with that, there's a whole range of other features, lots of stuff that's been added to our motion graphics templates, and just tons of editing finesse. The one that's actually got the biggest response from hardcore editors is a single button to remove all gaps in the timeline. So it's the little things sometimes. And how do you prioritize tasks? Because I guess you get a lot of requests, yep. and industry is always moving forward. Mm -hmm. How do you prioritize? How do you decide what will make it to the next available release? Well, in internally, we uh, have a process um, that, that's formal, and we also have an informal process. My job is to kind of set the longer term you know, directives over you know, three, four years, where do we want to go? And we meet with the teams, and they have their, their list, which is really informed a lot of the time by user requests. And we do a lot of customer meetings. So um, every year, we try to set goals for the product that drive towards uh, an ultimate destination. Um, and ultimately, which, which is what? <laughs> well, there's, there's, what we try to drive towards is you know, leadership in specific markets. So at the moment, um, we're really pushing hard on broadcast. That's been a multi-year uh, initiative for about the last eight years. We've been pushing very hard in that direction. In the last two years, we've accelerated our efforts in Hollywood. Um, so along with the features, uh, such as the previously mentioned uh, project locking, which is a specific Hollywood feature, we've opened an office in Santa Monica. We have a series of engineers that work specifically on feature films when they have issues. Uh, or they bump into workflow challenges. Um, we've done a lot of work around being able to take in specific metadata for Hollywood. So it really means let's focus on a market. Let's listen more intently to that market. We already reported about the upcoming new version, but many of our audience are really concerned about stability. Can you please let us know how do you, how do you tackle this? How do you manage to look after those issues? Unfortunately, when you develop software, there's you know always going to be some errors, and you know we try very very hard to reduce them every cycle. So the way we tackle that is uh, the feedback we get through the crash reporter. Uh, we also track how people use all the different software tools inside of the software, and every bit of feedback that comes back feeds into a process where we're constantly trying to make the software better. Uh, the reason we track which tools are used is we build out automated testing. So we test every aspect of the software, both by a machine test and also by user testing. Um, as this is an evolving industry, though, use cases and use models change. The combination of cameras, platforms, and what they're trying to achieve creatively evolves every cycle. And occasionally, we miss things. And that's where we have to listen like crazy. Um, although I'm sure anybody who's experienced a crash wouldn't believe it, our crash rates actually go down every cycle. And internally, we set goals that are tracked by us and the senior management of Adobe about providing a more stable product every cycle. So we do take it very seriously. And anytime someone has a, an issue or a challenge, um, we're, we're 
you know, we don't want that to happen, and we want to drive down any errors, any problems. I think we can both agree that the future, in many ways, is video. Mm -hmm. I mean, written content is somehow, unfortunately, fading. Mm -hmm. And how, how are you responding to that as, as a company? Well, I think it's a very exciting time. Um, you know, Cisco does research every year that looks at the shape of internet traffic, and they just published an update this year that says by 2021, 82% of internet traffic will be video. Some of that will be like video conference and things that are unprocessed, but still a high portion of that is going to be produced video. And that's because it, it, we have to think about this as a phase in digital literacy. People are now communicating with video. So we're striving to make the tools easier and easier to get started with so they can communicate with it. So video is one of the richest communication mediums because you not only get the language, you get the secondary meaning of the person, and also you can visually represent uh, different ideas, which is actually one of the themes we focused on very heavily in After Effects, you know, data representation, visual graphics. So when we look at video, um, I think when I was growing up, it was a very rarefied thing to be able to create video. You had to work a long time before you could get yourself into an edit suite. Today, everybody carries around a more powerful edit on their phone. It started more like you know, two fingers, one on play, one on record with two VCRs. That's, that's how we started, and exactly. then Premiere 4.2, and then or 4.0, actually. I started in tape. My first job in video was duplicating two-inch commercials, and I had to wear steel-toed boots in case I dropped the tape reel. Bill, thank you very much. It's always nice having you, and thank you very much for watching.